Hey everybody, I'm Jennifer Lester. My husband Chuck and I are the owners of Hammer and Stain in Blue Ridge. Um, we will open our store in late summer of next year. For now, we do have our Hammer at Home kits available and this is a how-to video and what to expect in your kits. So you will have your piece of wood. You will get your stain color of your choice. You will get paint colors of your choice. You will get sponges for paint, so the white sponges will be for the paint and the yellow sponges will be for your stain. You will also get a popsicle stick to help with your stencil and you also get your stencil. So for today we're going to do a sign for the store when it opens next summer. The first thing you need to do is stain your wood. You will need to do both sides because you may like one side better than the other. It needs to be, to look dry. You don't want it to look wet. So the best thing to do is take your sponge, stick it a corner in there, and then wipe it off on the edge of your bowl of stain so that you can still see all the little dots in the sponge. And then you're gonna go with the grain of the wood. So whichever way, the grains go, that's the way you need to go. You will not use all the stain that comes in your bowl, so do not be concerned if you end up with more stain left. That is perfectly fine. If you want your wood to be stained darker or lighter, then you just use either more or less stain depending on the color that you're going for. So you stick on and you just rub straight across long strokes until you are finished doing all the surface, including the sides, because you want your sides to be done as well. And don't worry about getting the paint or the stain on your hands. It will wash right off with a little bit of soap and water. When you first put it on, you will be able to see how it looks wet, and then that's when you rub with your sponge all the way across. And this helps you still be able to see all the grains in the wood, along with all the little knots that are there too. And that just gives your project a little more character. And then for the edges, especially for the round ones, I just go in a circle and go all the way around. And then that is what your stained piece of wood will look like. For the purpose of the video, I'm not gonna do the back side. That's what the stained side looks like. And then you just let it sit for about a minute or two. It really does not take long for it to dry at all. Now, once you're done with the stain, that is when you will put, sorry, I had to grab a towel. Um, that is when you will put your stencil on. So you'll take your stencil and I go over all the pieces, especially like with your letters where, like for example, the A has the little circle in the middle. I just go over the whole thing. So you'll go over your whole thing with a popsicle stick. And just make sure that it's pressed really good. And then you will peel off the back side that has the squares, the grid on the back. That's the part you want to peel off. So that's what you want to make sure when you pull it off that all the pieces of the stencil are still stuck. So see part of my H is wanting to come off. So I just make sure I press it down on it really good. Just pull it slow to make sure all of your letters stick. Okay, part of my, another one of my little letters stuck. So I just go back, I rub it with my finger really good and keep on going. Mm 
and the whole thing is off. And then you just line it up on your piece of wood the best that you can. Remember, these are homemade, so they do not need to be perfect. And then just spread it out with your hand. The glue stencils are very easy to pull off the wood. They're not going to stick, so it's not going to be hard. It's not going to mess up your stain. Rip it on very well. Make sure it's stick. And then you'll take your popsicle stick, especially those letters again. I will really get to make sure they stick to the wood enough when you pull off the transfer tape on the top. And I just pay extra attention to the letters. And then you'll pull the white piece, the cover, off. Pull this off slow as well because you don't want to pull up part of the, the inside of the letters or inside of your design. Because you want to make sure that everything sticks where it's supposed to. So I just take my time when I pull the, the transfer tape off because I do not want my stencil to get messed up. Just like that, the little part of the A wanted to come up again, so I just press it again. Hold it down with my thumb to make sure it's where it needs to be. And if the letters come up, just grab them with your big nail and stick them on there. The smaller the letters are, the sometimes the more difficult it can be. But that's okay. So then, once your stencil's on, this is what it will look like. Now we're going to start painting. You get the little white sponges for paint, and I would use a separate sponge for each color. So however many colors you get with your kit, that's how many little sponges you will have. This one I'm gonna do different colors. So the first part I'm going to do is I'm going to do my mountains and I'm going to make those white. So you just same thing, you wanna wipe it off the edge so you can see all the little dots. And then you're going to just up and down, just press all the way down. I'm going to let the white dry and move to the next color. So then I just open it up and just make sure you give your little cups just a little shake to make sure the paint is still mixed well. Same thing, dip it in, wipe it off so you see all the little dots at the bottom. of my letters. And just up and down. All of your paint will be up and down. And you don't want the paint gobbed up on the letters. That's why you use the sponge to go around and just make sure you spread it out and you don't have big gobs of paint. under the under the stencil and then I'm going to go back and do the white because it appears to be dry I'm going to get just a little bit more of the white because I want the mount I want the mountains to be bright white I'll go back over the mountains one more time as you can see when it's away from another color I tend to go a little faster so when it gets close to another part of the stencil, especially when I'm doing a different color. I'm just going to slow down a little bit just to make sure I don't mix my two colors. Let's 
especially down at those little corners of both mountains. I'm going to hit the red one more time too because I want it to be bright red and I want it to stand out. Now I'm going to finish the letters at the bottom. As you can see everything can be personalized right down to the colors that you want so it can match anything in your house or your business if you're doing a project for your business everything can be personalized and match exactly your taste and your personality and then I let it sit just for a couple minutes to dry. So usually this is when I'll go wash my hands and make sure I don't have smear paint everywhere. So it is, this is what it looks like while it's waiting to dry. And then we'll let it sit for just a little bit before we pull the stencil off of it. What I do is use tweezers and we'll have, once we open the store, we'll have tweezers in the store for you to pull off the little pieces of stencil left in like your letters, your E's and A's. And you just pull those off. I'm gonna give it just a little bit more. It's already almost dry. The white looks pretty dry. And pull your stencil, and if the stencil rips, it's okay because you're not going to use it anymore. Stencils to, or sorry, your tweezers to pull out the last bit of the stencils. Any parts that did not come off. Keep a pair of your little tweezers, makeup tweezers. Just grab one corner of it. Pull it up. you just touch them on the tweezers and it'll pop right off. And the finished project.